Ever wondered about the strange and intriguing process of harvesting Buddha's hand fruit? Well, buckle up because we're about to dive into the world of this extraordinary citrus wonder. Buddha's hand fruit, also known as citron, is one of nature's most unique creations. Unlike the common round citrus fruits we're familiar with, this one comes with a twist, quite literally. It's as if Mother Nature decided to sculpt a hand with elongated fingers, hence the name. Growing Buddha's Hand Fruit isn't your run-of-the-mill gardening task. It's an art, a science, and a test of patience all rolled into one. The trees, like other citrus varieties, prefer a warm climate, well-drained soil, and plenty of sunshine. But unlike their citrus cousins, these trees demand a little extra attention. They are quite sensitive to frost and require a good amount of care to ensure those distinctive fingers develop properly. The harvesting process of Buddha's hand fruit is as unique as its appearance. You see this fruit doesn't ripen in the traditional sense. There's no color change to signal that it's ready. Instead the farmers must rely on their experience and instincts looking for a slight softening of the fruit and a rich aromatic scent that fills the air. And here's the kicker. This fruit is as rare as it is unusual. Buddha's hand fruit isn't something you'll come across in your average grocery store. Its cultivation is limited, making it a prized possession among citrus connoisseurs. This scarcity contributes to its mystique, making it one of the most intriguing fruits to harvest. But the effort is well worth it. The Buddha's hand fruit is not only a feast for the eyes but also a boon for the senses. Its zest is used in cooking, the white pith is candied, and the fruit itself is a natural air freshener that can fill a room with its delightful citrus scent. Now that you know how fascinating the process of harvesting Buddha's hand fruit is, let's move on to a different kind of harvest. From the exotic to the everyday, have you ever thought about how chicken eggs are harvested? That's right, something as simple as a chicken egg goes through quite a process before it lands in your grocery cart. Let's venture into a day in the life of a chicken egg. The journey begins bright and early in the morning, Hens typically lay their eggs between 2 and 10 in the morning. It's a natural cycle, a beautiful display of nature's rhythm. Once the eggs are laid, it's time for the collection process to start. Now, this isn't a task for the faint-hearted. It requires a gentle touch and an eagle eye. Farmers meticulously gather the eggs, ensuring they don't miss any, as eggs left in the nest can encourage hens to become broody and stop laying. After the eggs are collected, they're off to be cleaned. But it's not as simple as running them under a faucet. The eggs are washed in a warm, sanitizing solution to remove any dirt and bacteria. This is crucial for the safety of those who will eventually consume the eggs. But we're not done yet. Once the eggs are spick and span, they're dried to prevent the growth of bacteria. This is followed by a thorough inspection, where each egg is carefully examined for any cracks or blemishes. Next up is sorting and grating. The eggs are divided based on their size and quality. This can be a manual process but most larger-scale egg farms use machines to speed things up. The eggs are then packed into cartons ready to be shipped to grocery stores, and there you have it. From the hen to the store, that's the journey of a chicken egg. It's a process that requires care, attention, and a whole lot of patience. And it's all done to ensure you get the freshest, safest eggs possible. After all that, you're probably thinking that egg harvesting is no easy task. But wait until you hear about potato harvesting. Potatoes a staple in many diets, but do you know how they make it to your table? Our journey begins with a humble seed potato. This is not your typical seed but a small piece of potato that contains at least one eye, a bud that will sprout into a new plant. These seed potatoes are planted in the cool, early spring soil, tucked in about three inches deep, and spaced around a foot apart. As the days lengthen and the sun warms the earth, the seed potato springs to life. It sends up shoots that break through the surface reaching for the sunlight. These green leafy plants are the powerhouses of potato production. They harness the energy of the sun, turning it into the starches that will become our beloved potatoes. Meanwhile beneath the soil a miraculous transformation is taking place. The seed potato is fueling the growth of a network of tubers. These are our future potatoes swelling and growing as they store the starches produced by the plant above. After about 10 weeks these tubers have grown into fully formed potatoes, but they are not ready for harvest just yet. First the plant above must die back, signaling that the potatoes have reached maturity. This is a period of dormancy where the skin of the potatoes hardens, preparing them for their journey from the ground to your table. Harvest time arrives with the crisp air of fall, farmers work diligently, gently lifting the potatoes from the earth to avoid bruising. 
It's a delicate process as any damage could lead to spoilage. Once harvested, the potatoes are stored in a cool, dark place to preserve their freshness until they're ready to be shipped to markets and grocery stores. Potatoes may seem simple but their journey from the ground to your plate is anything but. Now let's shift gears to a sweeter harvest. Cantaloupes, a sweet and juicy summer treat. But how do these delightful fruits make it to your fruit bowl? Let's embark on the journey of this sun-kissed fruit, starting from a tiny seed to the ripe, fragrant melon we all relish. The life of a cantaloupe begins with a small seed planted in fertile soil, nurtured with ample sunlight and water. With careful tending the seed sprouts into a vine that stretches out, seeking the sun's warmth. As the vine grows, delicate yellow flowers bloom, inviting bees for pollination. Once pollinated, these flowers transform into small green fruits that continue to swell until they become the sizable cantaloupes we recognize. Throughout these stages, the farmer's vigilance is key. They monitor the plants for signs of disease, pests, and nutrient deficiencies, ensuring the cantaloupes grow healthy and robust. But the real challenge comes when it's time to harvest. Identifying a ripe cantaloupe isn't as straightforward as it might seem. Unlike some fruits, cantaloupes don't continue to ripen after harvest, so timing is of the essence. A ripe cantaloupe will have a uniform golden color and a sweet, musky aroma. It will also yield slightly to pressure, particularly at the blossom end. The correct way to harvest a cantaloupe is by slip harvesting. This means waiting until the fruit naturally separates or slips from the vine with a gentle tug. This slip is nature's way of saying the cantaloupe is ripe and ready to be savored. Once harvested, the cantaloupes are carefully packed to prevent bruising and transported to markets, where they await to bring a burst of sweetness to your palate. Cantaloupe harvesting might seem like a sweet deal but there's more to it than meets the eye. Now, let's take these products to the market. Now that we have our harvest, how do these products make their way to the market? Well, the journey begins right after the harvest. Imagine, if you will, a convoy of trucks and tractors loaded with the fresh produce. They are all headed towards the marketplace where eager buyers await. The transport process is a delicate one as the produce must be handled with care to avoid damage. Next comes sorting. This is a crucial step in the journey from farm to market. Each Buddha's hand fruit, chicken egg, potato, and cantaloupe, is inspected and sorted based on its quality. The best ones are reserved for selling fresh, while the rest may be used for making juices, jams, or other processed foods. This sorting process helps ensure that only the finest produce makes its way to your table. Once sorted, the produce is then packaged. The packaging is designed to protect the produce during transport, while also making it easy for buyers to handle. For example, eggs are placed in cartons, while fruits and vegetables are often bagged or boxed. Now, on to selling. The produce is displayed in the market stalls, ready for buyers. It's a sight to behold, really. The vibrant colors of the fresh fruits and vegetables, the neat rows of eggs, all waiting to be picked up by discerning customers. One important aspect of selling fresh produce is timing. The fruits and vegetables are harvested at just the right time to ensure they are ripe and ready for consumption when they reach the market. Too early and they won't taste as good, too late and they might spoil. It's a delicate balance and it requires a keen understanding of each type of produce. Quality control is another crucial aspect. Regular checks are performed to ensure that the produce remains fresh and of high quality. Any produce that doesn't meet the standards is promptly removed. And there you have it. The journey of Buddha's hand fruit, chicken eggs, potatoes and cantaloupes from farm to market. It's a process filled with care, hard work,